Tom underscore S, who commented on a previous video, suggested that I addressed ego death and reincarnation, a suggestion I told him I had accepted to consider as soon as time allowed me to contemplate on the matter. In the meantime, Patrick from the Start Where You Stand channel put out a video where he, at a certain point, talks about an old zodiac and a new zodiac, in relation with the Old and New Testaments, respectively. This was very synchronistic because a good part of where my contemplation on reincarnation and ego death had led me would also touch upon the reincarnations of the god of this world, which are, in my view, the same as Patrick's zodiacs. As in my view, the zodiacs regulate the lower script, as mentioned in the scripts and purpose contemplation. Now, as usual, everything I will state here is merely my own opinion and should never, ever be taken as truth, nor as literal or real. It will be a group of metaphors, analogies, and whatever language tools I can use to allow each of you to then perform your own internal and individual alchemies. Well, firstly, my observation will have to focus on what I see the predicament to be, and for that, here we go, metaphors will be used. So imagine a car traveling on the roads of reality. This car is material and was put together using the exact same elements as the road, the trees, the mountains, the rivers and lakes, and so on, that it passes by during its trip. The this symbolizes the body, in, in our case a human body. It is what allows interaction, movement and application on reality, being made up of the same stuff as what it interacts with. Also, the car needs to consume other vehicles, uh, elements, to fuel itself and do some on-the-go maintenance. Now, inside the car is the driver. The driver, however, is not only not able to normally leave the car, but was also born in it, and it is through the windscreen and various sensors that it is able to learn and build a personality through experience. He is therefore knowledgeable of how to drive his own car, where he was born, but only able to view that which it belongs to, and that which is visible to itself, such as the car and the surrounding material reality. He cannot see other drivers, as egos are not material but mental, but he can hear their voices through the code agreed upon by sequential horn sounds, which represents language using the body's ability to produce voice. The driver is therefore the ego. Now this driver was born in the car seat, already plugged in to the steering wheel, pedals, gear handle and so on, but has no other visible indication of where he's supposed to go with the car or what, he's, uh, what is the purpose of his own existen existence in it, except from what other drivers in other cars tell him. In turn, those other drivers are just as blind, but pass on the same cultural manuals and traffic regulations as they were taught, considering that, since they were born abandoned by any type of evident guidance, that these manuals and regulations have to be it, or at least they will have to do. So the driver and the car travel around together, keeping themselves busy and pretending or believing purpose. The car will more or less gradually wear itself down, it will pick up dents and malfunctions and eventually break down altogether in time. Then the car is decomposed into the same elements that make up everything else in reality and new cars are put together with them, where new drivers are born into. Yet, when the car breaks down, what happens to the driver? I'll get there later on. Now, what most of the drivers do not know, and may live their entire driver and car existence unaware of, is that they may very well have an invisible passenger in the car. Some do not, I believe, but most driver car systems do have an extra passenger. Now the thing is that this passenger can be from two types of sources. It is either a mental passenger or a passenger from the realm beyond all constructs, where all beings are and never become, which I personally call truth. Now a mental passenger is a construct, 
just as the ego is. But instead of driving its own car, it hitches a ride, most of the times without the driver's consent on others. And being a construct subject to time and linear thinking, it is able to speak and may very well speak to the driver and create a rapport with him. The mental passenger can say that it is God to the driver and that everything he says have to be obeyed or else insert worst driver's fear here. Or it can say that it is the devil, which would, for the purpose, amount to the same. It can tell them that it is a being of truth. It can say all these things, using words, because that is all it is capable of doing. Talking. To try to influence and convince the driver, who is the only one who can decide upon the car's interaction. Oh, but the driver can allow himself to be convinced by the mental passenger to temporarily or permanently give up his driver's seat and controls to the passenger. Yet, the mental passenger has no power but can use the driver's power, if so allowed by the other. It can only use language, a language it has convinced several other drivers to use and evoke rules it has in the past convinced other drivers to follow. It is not a being of truth, because it uses words, languages and codes, which only belong to the mental realm. The only realm it can interact with and influence, being made up of it itself. However, the passenger can also be a, a being from beyond all constructs, a being of truth, from truth, individually manifesting in that car and with that driver. Now, you might ask, why wouldn't this true being also use words to communicate with the driver? The answer is simpler than at first seems. Because language can never represent a true thing, only a concept. And the concept is always false. It is not the actual truth. If words were directly used by truth, then it would confuse the driver more than it would help, as it would then be stuck on concepts. The way truth actually communicates is far more effective and leaves no doubts, but the driver has to pay attention, if he so wishes. The true passenger, or truth ray, truth self, etc., will not try to ultimately um, guide the driver to a specific destination in the reality, although it will do so as part of the driver's journey, but to make the driver realize that it is not abandoned, that it is a construct in a world of constructs, and that his concerns are unwarranted. Moreover, it will offer a true connection from beyond suffering and dependency, leaving the driver less subject and vulnerable to the agreed-upon regulations of that specific driver culture. So how does this true passenger communicate? Well, it will show the driver, through constructs in reality itself, what should be realized as truth or understood? Since truth is independent life from beyond time, it is able to synchronize within time, hence the use of synchronicities, for example, a certain reality construct or group of them with the driver's own mental programming. So the driver is, for example, wondering if he should turn left or right at the next fork. As in his mind the considerations of pros and cons are going on, the true passenger will synch synchronize. For just a simple example, a billboard that markets a cleaning product called Go Clean, whose slogan is shown as the right way to clean your house. Normally this would be meaningless to the driver, but at the same time, as he was considering left or right, the Go and right words in that billboard were a message. This works best than direct words, because words do not require attentiveness, while synchronicity does. And truth is all about awareness and attention. Also, although there may be more than one passenger in the car, apart from the driver, it is only possible to have multiples of the same realm, because where truth is, mental falsehood is cast out. So if, one, if more than one is present, 
then they're not from truth. Okay, so now that we have addressed my contemplation of what the car, driver and passengers are or can be, let's go back to the subject that is reincarnation and ego death. So what happens to the driver, the ego, after the car or body breaks down? Well, it can be either recycled, dumping his memories into a collective one bag, while awaiting a new car, or it can leave together with his truth essence companion. You see, to me, it seems that this reality exists and is set up to allow for reincarnation of the Frankenstein monsters we culturally call God and or the devil. These monsters or shadows are fully dependent, I repeat, fully dependent on the knowledge, memories and experiences of the individual drivers, generating consequently its own next set of personalities from them. Yes, a sort of superego, but not in the individual sense that Freud wrote about, no, that would be merely a mental passenger playing God, but in the collective sense that Jung brought to the fore. The egos are created in the image of these monsters, these mega-mental constructs, precisely to be able to then be assimilated, resistance is futile, or consumed just like Saturn or Cronus ate his children. This is ego death, to be eaten by God or the devil. Why consumed? Because by doing so, the experience of the individual ego is assimilated to become part of the mega construct called the God of the following age. And now I'm going into what Patrick from Start Where You Stand channel was mentioning in his latest video. In my view, the zodiacs he mentioned are the incarnations of the God of the age. That mega ego made up of the assimilation of the multitude of individual egos' experiences and knowledge. So at the turning of an age, the reincarnation of God is processed from the ego's memories built up until then, as the egos had been recycled and reborn into bodies at each life termination. However, truth is present, as I mentioned, and even a passenger if the ego so wishes it. So truth will show the ego what he needs to let go of to not become part of the new deity's reincarnation by avoiding assimilation. Just like in Star Trek, the Borg of One, referred to the previous contemplation called One, if needed. It will try to assimilate the ego, but the ego can remain embraced to his invisible, mute, and yet powerful friend instead, and then resistance is no longer futile. When an ego leaves reality together with his truth ray, the truth will go back to its own realm of independent being, but it will not abandon a friend in the same way nobody in a pure mind would abandon his dog. Truth will go back to truth, yes, but it dreams a dependent reality, one where egos with linear minds can exist and make it a pleasant, healthy, unattaching environment where they can exist without peril or confusion. One where constructs exist, yes, but are not tainted by a nature of suffering and deceit. Some call it heaven. Why not? A word as any other. What is important to understand is that even if your ego goes to heaven, it is not you. You, the true you, goes back to truth. Heaven is a concept for our pets to live in. Our lovely, clumsy driver companions of many a road trip that we love regardless. Our true place, however, is as truth, emanations of a source, but as independent beings. As such, we are composed of a single element and opposite in nature to any concept or construct that are always made up of dependent elements held together. Given that we can always perform alchemy on any song or film, I choose to interpret this chorus from the song Woodstock by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young in probably a very different manner than their original passenger's intent. We are stardust, we are golden, we are a billion-year-old carbon, and we got to get ourselves back to the garden. <laughs>